In this video, we'll take a look at the all-new Rotax E10. The electric power unit designed for the cadet class. This tutorial will guide you through the complete installation process, showing how to install the E10 on a chassis and get it race ready in both single and dual battery configurations. Let's begin by taking a look at all the components included in the Rotax E10 package. Drive unit, the heart of the product, as shown here. Batteries, depending on your power requirements, the system can be equipped with either one or two batteries. Accessory kit, this includes all essential components required for operation. The wiring harness, front and rear, cart status lights, DESS key terminal, accelerator sensor, steering wheel module, Bowden cable, and a protective cap for the wiring harness when operating in single battery mode. Charger, supplied with a DC connection cable for the batteries and an additional cable for powering the battery cooling units. A C connection cable, available separately in different versions to meet regional standards. In this video, we are using an EU Type F power plug as we are filming in Austria. Battery cooling units. These are used during the charging process to maintain optimal battery temperature. External components and tools. To assemble the E10 on a chassis, you will also need several components that are not included in the standard Rotax supply scope. Primarily, this includes the chassis itself and the mounting interface brackets required to install the drive unit and battery. These brackets vary depending on the chassis manufacturer. Rotax has collaborated with all major chassis brands, each of which has developed its own dedicated mounting solution to ensure the best possible fit. Before starting the E10 installation, we also recommend preparing the following tools or similar. To begin the installation process, mount the external battery brackets onto the chassis as specified by your chassis manufacturer. Keep the brackets slightly loose during initial assembly as their position may need to be adjusted later in the setup. DESS key terminal and acceleration pedal sensor subassembly. Next, we focus on the subassembly of the DESS key and accelerator pedal sensor. Depending on your Rotax partner, this module may come pre-assembled, or you may need to assemble it yourself. The assembly is straightforward if you follow the steps shown in this tutorial. Once assembled, mount it onto the chassis as demonstrated. The exact positioning may vary slightly depending on your chassis brand. Next, we adjust the Bowden cable to the correct length, connecting the accelerator pedal sensor to the throttle pedal on the right front of the cart. One, measure and cut the hose. Remove the cable from the hose. Insert the empty hose into the acceleration sensor and route it along the chassis to the throttle pedal. Mark the cutoff point and trim the hose to length. Two, check the hose entry. If the cutting process compresses the entry hole, carefully bend it back to ensure the cable can move freely. Smooth cable movement is essential for proper throttle response. Three, Install the Bowden cable. Route the cable through the acceleration sensor with the spring in place and connect it to the pre-cut hose. Apply Bowden cable lubricant for smooth operation. Four, mount to the accelerator pedal. Attach the cable to the throttle pedal, ensuring slight slack in the resting position. The pedal must not apply force to the sensor at rest. When the pedal is fully pressed, the sensor arm should reach full travel without bending. 
Steering Wheel Module Install the steering wheel module onto the chassis. Remove the original steering wheel. Then position the new module between the chassis bar and steering wheel. Insert one screw at the top to hold it, then tighten the rest. Depending on your chassis and wheel brand, minor adjustments may be needed. Now install the cart status lights onto the chassis, starting with the front light. You can distinguish front and rear LEDs by their center color, yellow for front, orange for rear. Front LED installation. One, mark 60 mm center to center distance on the Nassau bumper. Two, use a 4.5 mm drill bit to drill the holes on the Nassau bumper. Then, use a step drill bit to create a hole in between. 3. Insert the front light and tighten screws from the backside. Rear LED installation. Mount the rear LED with the metal plate onto the drive unit as shown. Drive unit. Install the E10 drive unit onto the chassis. 1. Mount the upper engine brackets onto the drive unit bottom. 2. Remove the rear right tire to ease chain installation. Press brake pedal while loosening. 3. Place the drive unit on the chassis and attach lower brackets loosely. 4. Route the chain from the rear sprocket to the drive unit sprocket. Standard 17 tooth, 13 to 20 available. 5. Adjust position for correct chain tension, then tighten all screws. 6. Check the chain tensioner position and reassemble the tire. Now connect all components via the wiring harness. 1. Lay the harness along the chassis as shown. 2. Connect in this order. Drive unit communication plug. Rear cart status light cable. Drive unit power cables. DESS key terminal, purple connector. Accelerator sensor, blue connector. Front cart status light. Steering wheel module. Secure the harness with cable ties at key chassis points. Ensure that the cable harness is securely installed, particularly around the steering wheel area. Route the cable to prevent any unnecessary rubbing or wear while keeping them tight enough to avoid movement or looseness. Install the batteries. Mount one battery on the left side. Connect it to the harness. For single battery mode, attach the protective cap to the unused port and secure the cable. For dual battery setup, mount the second battery on the right and connect it instead of the cap. Tighten all bracket connections and ensure secure fastening. The system automatically detects one or two batteries and switches between 5 kilowatts and 10.5 kilowatts operation. The E10 setup is now complete. To power up, press the on-off button to energize the system. Press both reserve and boost buttons for at least three seconds to engage drive mode. Follow the operations guide for charging and race procedures. See you on track.